Let's begin our discussion on linear algebra. First, we have to talk about the real plane, and the common notation is R two, which is the set of elements bracket a comma b, where a and b are real numbers. These elements are called ordered pairs, which implies that a comma b is not equal to b comma a in general. The element bracket zero comma zero is called the origin, and is denoted by the zero vector. Because we know that elements of R two, which we initially understand as points on the plane, can be represented as vectors. For example, the point one comma three is the vector whose tail is at the origin, and the tip is at the point one comma three. There are two operations defined on R two. The first one is addition, and the way it is defined is to simply add the corresponding components. After two vectors, in other words, x one comma x two plus y one comma y two equals x one plus y one comma x two plus y two. We know that vectors can be added using the tip to tail method. For example, if I have this vector a and another vector b, where both of them have the tail at the origin, in order to find a plus b, I just have to put the tail of one of the vectors. Let's say a, to the tip of the other vector, which is b. In this case, the tip of the new vector a is the tip of the vector a plus b. So we have this new vector formed from the addition. The second operation is the scalar multiplication. In this case, we multiply a real number, say lambda, to a point, and the result is simply to multiply each component. Of the point by lambda, in other words, lambda times x one comma x two equals lambda x one comma lambda x two. To understand what this means geometrically, let's say I have a vector v drawn on the plane. Then two times v is the same vector, except the length is doubled. Also, if I want to find a vector negative a half v. Then it would be pointing in the opposite direction, but still parallel to the original vector v. The half means that I would have half the length of the original vector. We can see that scalar multiplication corresponds to scaling or resizing a vector. Hence, the number used for the scaling, in this case lambda, is called a scalar. Now we try to describe a line in R two. The first way that we can use is by means of a Cartesian equation, which we have learned in high school. It takes the form a x plus b y plus c equals zero. In this case, a point, let's say x naught comma y naught, lies on the line if and only if the equation is satisfied. In other words, the left hand side equals the right hand side when the substitution x equals x naught and y equals y naught is made. In other words. We have a times x naught plus b times y naught plus c equals zero. The second method is the vector equation, which can be described as follows: Let u and v be vectors in R two, where v is not the zero vector. The line L passing through u and parallel to v is the following: It is the set of u plus lambda v, where lambda is a real number. In other words, if we write u as u one comma u two and v equals v one comma v two, then the line L can be written as the set of points u one plus lambda v one comma u two plus lambda v two, where lambda is a real number. To make sense of this definition, it is useful for us to draw the following diagram. Let's say we have a line L as shown. In this case, u is a point on the line L. In other words, the vector u has its tip on a point in L. We also know that v is a vector which is parallel to L, so v would look something like this. Then, lambda times v is a vector which is parallel to v, but possibly having a different length. If we add lambda v to u, that means that lambda v. Is put on L and points toward another point on L. In other words, u plus lambda v 
gives another point on L. By varying the value of lambda, u plus lambda v can get to any point on L. So it describes all the points on L. In this case, v is called a direction vector of L, because it really describes the direction of L. Note that if v is a direction vector, then k times v is also a direction vector for all real numbers k, because scalar multiplication does not change the direction of v. Let's look at some simple examples. Let's try to describe the x-axis using a vector equation. To do so, we first have to find one particular point on the x-axis, and it is easy to use the origin 0, 0. To find a direction vector, we try to walk along the x-axis, so the easiest way would be to walk one unit to the right on the x-axis, and we get to the point 1, 0. Hence, 1, 0 can be regarded as a direction vector for the x-axis. So the x-axis can be described by 0, 0 plus lambda times 1, 0, where lambda is a real number. For the y-axis, again, we try to find one particular point on the y-axis, and again, origin is a good option. To find a direction vector for the y-axis, again, we try to walk along the y-axis. So if we walk one unit upwards, we get to the point 0, 1. So 0, 1 is a direction vector for the y-axis. So the y-axis can be written as 0, 0 plus lambda times 0, 1, where lambda is a real number. Also, the line x plus y equals 1 can be described by 1, 0 plus lambda times negative 1, 1, where lambda is a real number. To understand this, we can draw the following diagram. 1, 0 starts from the origin and points at the point 1, 0. So the tip of this vector is a point on the line x plus y equals 1. The direction vector, negative 1, 1, means to move one unit to the left and one unit upwards. So we should get this vector which points in the top left direction. When we put the tail of this vector on the tip of the vector 1, 0, we can draw the line x plus y equals 1. We can also check that this set really represents the line x plus y equals 1 using algebra. More precisely, the x coordinate is 1 minus lambda and the y coordinate is lambda. Hence, x plus y equals 1 minus lambda plus lambda, which is indeed 1. Now, let's look at an example of converting a vector equation into a Cartesian equation. Suppose we have a line described as 1, 2 plus lambda times negative 3, 4, where lambda is a real number. To find a Cartesian equation, we have to relate x and y, so let x, y be a point on L. Then, x, y can be written in the form 1, 2 plus lambda times negative 3, 4, which is equal to 1 minus 3 lambda, 2 plus 4 lambda. By equating the coordinates, we get x equals 1 minus 3 lambda and y equals 2 plus 4 lambda. We label these equations as 1 and 2. By eliminating lambda, we can find a relationship between x and y. So we take the first equation times 4 and add the second equation times 3. We get 4x plus 3y equals 4 times bracket 1 minus 3 lambda plus 3 times bracket 2 plus 4 lambda. By expanding, we have 4 minus 12 lambda plus 6 plus 12 lambda, which is equal to 10. Hence, the required equation is 4x plus 3y minus 10 equals 0. Let's also do one example of converting a Cartesian equation into a vector equation. Suppose we have a line 7x minus 2y plus 1 equals 0. First, we rewrite the equation as y equals 
7 over 2x plus 1 over 2. We can draw this line out, and it means that the slope of the line is 7 over 2, and the y-intercept is 1 over 2. In this case, the direction vector for the line is 2, 7, because indeed, the slope of the line being 7 over 2 means that whenever the x-coordinate is increased by 2, the y-coordinate is increased by 7. Also, a particular vector can be given by the y-intercept in other words, 0, 1 over 2. So, the required equation is 0, 1 over 2 plus lambda times 2, 7, where lambda is a real number.